Hi guys, I am so happy to share this video with you because I had a very interesting question come to my attention by my patients. They said, you know what, you've had guests on your podcast like Dr. Ken Berry, uh, A. Day Fox, also known as the Black Carnivore, Dr. Georgia Eade, a very brilliant psychiatrist, and of course, Dr. Anthony Chasey. They're all carnivores and yet they don't seem to complain about constipation. So if that question also interests you, this video was made for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Hampton, a board-certified family and obesity medicine doctor with a master's in nutrition and functional medicine. And yes, over my entire lifetime, I've been told that fiber is the secret to have good and regular bowel movements. And they, they've said this for years, and they've said it because it's good for your immune system. It's good for your uh, colon. It's good for your ability to lose weight. And of course, it's really good to help you prevent constipation. But then I started to think to myself, you know what? That kind of makes sense, but it kind of doesn't because if I take my colon, which is already filled with something, if I'm constipated, then I'm going to add more bulk to it, which is what fiber does. And then I'm going to squeeze that through this little hole. That doesn't really make sense. It also doesn't make sense for me to put more cars on the expressway of Chicago if I'm having some traffic issues and then think that adding more cars is going to allow maybe a four lane uh, road to go down to two lanes and that's going to somehow help. So it just didn't make sense. It didn't resonate with me. And so I had to start doing a little digging for you to help us both understand what's going on. Now, it does make sense. It does make sense that if I'm on a standard American diet, um, if I go from a standard American diet to a high fiber diet, that may be helpful because the standard American diet is just horrible. But that's also true of most diets compared to the standard American diet. So that didn't really make me feel like I had an answer with that because I still couldn't understand. You take people on low carb, keto, ketovore, or carnivore, and they're not getting constipated, at least from talking to people, right? So, so I had to dive a little deeper. And I think the University of Western States for giving me an education, a master's in nutrition, because by earning that, they helped me to understand how to have a curious brain, how to never accept conventional wisdom. I don't want you to do that and always question things, right? So now I can look at studies rather than in a lab, in a clinical setting, epidemiological, where we're looking at data. And I can, I can look at a study and tell if this study is of value. So one study I want to share with you guys today to help answer this constipation and fiber question is a study that was done by the World Journal of Gastroenterology. And the title may surprise you, Stopping or Reducing Dietary Fiber Intake Reduces Constipation and Its Associated Symptoms. That's a surprising title because we've been told fiber is the key to preventing constipation. So the aim of the study was to investigate the effect of reducing dietary fiber on patients with constipation. It was 63 participants in the study. It was between May 2008 to May 2010 who were enrolled in the study. And, and then they were asked, of course, to uh, reduce fiber. Actually, in the beginning, just for two weeks, no fiber at all, just no fiber at all. And then thereafter to reduce the amount of dietary fiber intake uh, to a level they found acceptable. After they did that, uh, they wanted it at one in six months, let's see if we're having constipation. Are we able to evacuate our stools? Are we having any abdominal symptoms? And this is what the study uh, was looking to do. Now, interesting enough, the results are very surprising, but not surprising for this video. Patients who stopped or reduced dietary fiber had significant improvements in their symptoms while those who continued on a high fiber diet had no change, no improvement, which is really uh, a pretty uh, surprising reality. And of those who stopped fiber completely, literally like a carnivore, like a ketovore, like, a, like many people on keto, the bowel frequency increased from having one every 3.75 days to having one bowel movement every day. They actually increased the number of bowel movements they were having by like, getting rid of the fiber, which is completely uh, uh, shocking to see. And, um, and so this is really pretty striking information and information I think that we have to pause um, for a moment and, and, and think about because it really kind of took me off 
guard to see these uh, types of studies. Now, for those who remained on a high fiber diet, they continued to have one bowel movement every 6.8 days. In other words, they were only having bowel movements every seven days, which is crazy. So this is the opposite of what you would expect. You would expect people eating more fiber to have more bowel movements and appears that the opposite is true. So their conclusion was that idiopathic constipation and its associated symptoms can be effectively reduced by stopping or lowering the intake of of dietary fiber. Let's look at this real uh, nice graph that they share just to put some things in perspective. Uh, 63 participants overall, that's what that N equals 63 means. Of that, uh, six were in that high fiber group, 16 in the reduced fiber group, and then you have 41 in no fiber group. Of the ones in the high fiber group, six out of six had constipation, bloating, and bowel strain. Literally everybody who was in a high fiber group. Now, if you go all the way over to the no fiber group, zero had anal bleeding, constipating, bloatedness, and and abdominal strain. Zero. So again, these are shocking statistics, but we can't argue with the science. So the question is, what do you do with this information? Because we are generally asked to follow the dietary guidelines. And if you follow the dietary guidelines, they would say you need fiber in your diet. In fact, they have pages of recommendations. And unfortunately, the first thing on their recommendation is cereal, which we know is a highly processed grain, which really is not gonna add any nutritional value to your life. And they got a beautiful image of our babies on here, and yet the dietary guidelines may be failing us. Now, let's think about this. Now, on page 10 of the guidelines, it says that the guidelines were designed for the politicians, for the nutrition professionals, like our dietitians and healthcare professionals, like myself as a physician, nurse practitioners, et cetera, to help you and your family uh, you know, consume a healthy diet, right? So that's number one. Number two is that the information that's being shared is supposed to also be the basis for what we share publicly to the community from the USDA's perspective, HHS's nutrition program's perspective. So in other words, Your local and state uh, governments are expected, even the food industry and the schools are expected to use these dietary guidelines to make decisions. But this is the problem, guys. On page 11 of this uh, uh, dietary guideline document, it's saying that that the guidelines are not intended to contain clinical guidelines for treating chronic diseases. So what are we doing, guys? So we have guidelines that are being used by clinicians who treat medical conditions and nutrition professionals and uh, our school programs and the military, and yet they're not designed to treat medical conditions, yet only 7% of the population in the United States are metabolically healthy, meaning 93% are not. So we're only writing guidelines for a very small percentage of the population Yet these guidelines are not really helping the people who need it the most. So I really um, want you to think about your clinician and know that they're not trying to do anything to harm you. Your clinician is following recommendations that are considered standard of care. So they may recommend that you eat more fruits and vegetables and fiber when you're constipated. That's really what I was doing. And only until I discovered a new way. I I discovered that restricting carbs was the best path to metabolic health, which is why I now hand my patients handouts that say, eat this, don't eat that. And of course, in my link tree, you'll see in the show notes, you can actually print that for you and your family as well. So what's the takeaway from today's video, guys? Well, the first thing is that I'm not fiber shaming because if somebody is eating food uh, that has a lot of fiber and they're regular and they feel fine, I think they should continue doing that. I have no problem with that. Although fiber doesn't really have any nutrient value, uh, if that's you, then feel free to do that. I also don't want you to look at your doctor some kind of way because they're following guidelines. That's what they're expected to do. That's what I was expected to do. I just was uh, able to think outside the box. I make videos. I do lectures to help my colleagues think outside the box so that we can stop depending on 
someone telling us how to be good clinicians. Instead, we follow our logic and the research to do that as well. Um, you also learned today that carb restriction may actually improve your uh, symptoms of constipation by reducing fiber, which is a pretty big eye opener for so many of us. And you also are now thinking about this adding bulk concept. Does it really make sense to add bulk to your diet to make things flow better? Well, maybe not. Uh, maybe just like the traffic in Chicago, I'm not going to add more cars to help the traffic move a little bit more smoothly. And, and, and at the end of the day, you do not need fiber to have normal, healthy bowel movement. So you now know that. And you also have permission if you decide, you know what, I do want to adopt a low carb diet. Now you have permission to do that. Keto, ketovore, carnivore without fear that you're not getting enough fiber. So I hope this video added value. Please, please, please share, subscribe, uh, hit the bell because people need to learn this information, even if it's just to give them permission to do things that they're afraid to do, like adopt a keto for a kind of board diet. So, so thank you so much for checking me out today. I really appreciate you guys on this journey with me. And until we have another insightful video, continue to be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest.